begotten son, Yahushua Hamashiach, to all the family scattered to the four corners of the earth, as always, Shalom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so grateful that you all decided to join me today. And because this message might be a bit long, I'm just going to jump on into it. Today's message is coming from the book of Revelation. Revelation 9 to be specific. Now, bear with me. My throat might get a little dry because it does when I read for very long periods of time. But feel free to join me and read along. Okay. So, here goes. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahuwah in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they that had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is the Hebrew tongue, or in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before Yahuwah saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates and the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having the breastplates of fire and of jet, was this, jacin and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths, issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, 
neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this word. Brothers and sisters, let's get down to it. So, this morning, I had another message that I had to give, but this message intercepted and took precedence. And it's not because I just saw in the news or posted on the internet that Israel was about to be attacked by locusts. No. This was actually from early this morning, and while doing the research, I saw that. So, coincidence? Hmm. <laughs> But anyway, let's get into this. The interpretation, or not really interpretation, but the, the spiritual giving of knowledge on this passage is very prolific. Because let's go into the uh, Revelation 12 real quick before I go any further. And it reads, Therefore rejoice, this is Revelation 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Okay, so... Let's go to Revelation 8, verse 12 to 13. And the fourth angel sounded. Wait. Okay. All right. Let's go back. Revelation 12, verse 13. Sorry. I mean, Revelation 8, verse 12 to 13. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So, we go on to ch uh, chapter 9, where it says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and, into, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So, uh, if we compare that to Al-Satan, the star that fell out of the sky, that's who it was. And he opened the bottomless pit. Now, bear with me, because I really need y'all to get your spiritual hearing and understanding. Because Israel, let's be honest, sometimes we, we have a hearing problem and an understanding problem. Don't want to hear, don't want to, you know, just want to do your own thing. But I beckon you. If it's any time, please listen. All right? Now, here we go. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass, of the tree, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahuwah in their foreheads. So, if you watch my other videos on Revelation, I speak a lot about how Revelation tends to unravel. It speaks of the past, the present, and the future. And this passage is no different. Because I've seen where a lot of people think, oh, these are just futuristic things to happen. But as long as you stay connected to your Christian church, make it seem like, oh, no, you're good where you at. You know, everything is good. Everything is great. <laughs> you're going to get lost in the sauce. This right here, this whole passage is talking about when 
all Satan fell onto the earth and you realize his time is short. We know that. Even shorter now. Like we are on the tippings of the return of our, our Hamashiach. But some of y'all are still in La La Land and we're trying to like prick y'all out of that mindset to get on code and have a similar, you know, set up a similar mindset where we have to be defenders of the law that was given to us. But uh, this right here is Deuteronomy 28 unraveling. And we say that again. Deuteronomy 28 unraveling. Where he sent these people to come get our forefathers out of their land. And this is the beginning of it. But it didn't just come out of nowhere. This is all Shatan's kingdom taking over at that moment. Right? Al Satan got the key and he let out his demonic spirit and his people who are not a people. I'll keep stressing that because my Elohim tells me that. And I'll, I'll show y'all later where we're getting to with this. Right? Because it has to come a time when Israel has to start really listening to the word of your Elohim. Because it is righteous and true and has never led you astray if you seek true, sincere understanding. Okay? So, he comes and he, he talks about, and there, there came out of the smoke, because this is Yehukana, John. And he talks about, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. So you're like listening, to like what are they talking about? But if you read further and he starts to give you the description of them, there's something that starts to just like, well, not at everyone, but when we seek spiritual things, we get spiritual blessings and insight. Um, he says... And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. Now, five months is it's a spiritual time, you know, a heavenly time on the Most High's timeline for which he gave who? The time to stomp out the people, the Gentiles, right? The Gentiles. But not only the Gentiles, but we're going to go further and we'll see what type of Gentiles. <laughs> right? Because this is what the Bible, the, the, the revelation is basically trying to tell us. The Most High is trying to tell you, Israel, you is in deep doo-doo. Okay? You in deep trouble. I've been warning y'all for a long, long, long time about what will come upon you. And here it is. Right? Here it is. And when he's talking about the locusts, let's go... Uh, it talks about you, they'll seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Same thing like what Deuteronomy 28 is talking about and how you see our ancestors, these whippings, you see them with these like, ugh, like these uh, sores and uh, these just, I don't know how they didn't die from those, but the whippings look deadly, vicious on their backs, but we'll talk about that too. But if you think about a slave trade, like I'll continue to say this, but that is the most evilest, devastating act to ever happen on this planet. They can deny it all they want to because that's what they do. They're the ones who have a perpetual hatred for our people. Now, you can keep trying to deny it and live in Stockholm Syndrome land all you want, but a perpetual hatred means it doesn't end. Look it up. It's not intermittent, where it stops and goes, it continues. And they were set in this way against you because the Most High had already told you, listen, if he turns his face from you, he picks up his hand and goes, you have to fare with the heathens. And they have no respect for you. No respect of persons. They treat your old and your young and your women the same way. Didn't want to listen. Still got that Stockholm Syndrome. Still thinking, oh man, but they're just people. But that's not what this scripture is telling you. He's showing you. They're Al-Shatan's people. He gave over the key 
to Al Shatan and you open up the bottomless pit and release the whole havoc on you. This is the six seals that we were talking about too. I, like the Most High gave spiritual in, insight through His Holy Ruach to let y'all know what time it is. We are literally. This whole scripture shows you when you get into the fifth seal. We are literally in the fifth seal, and um, yeah, we are. <laughs> So, time is upon us, and some of y'all are still in La La Land like, man, I just want me some light-skinned babies. Oh, life is all girty. Laughing it up and acting like a minstrel show and entertainment. Being distracted by every single shiny thing you can find. Y'all over here concerned about celebrities who already sold their souls out to Satan to chuck and jive and distract you. It's like distractions, 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 and more distractions. And y'all just get taken away. When we said the sea had been uh the the sea had been sent after you, y'all think I was joking, like, hey, we're not sure what you talk about. The distractions are out there. Many of y'all are just getting like popped off from like left and right. Not staying focused. Like if I'm not here to say anything or or someone else, the people who say they are the leaders. Stand up. Right? It's more than just saying that you are the leaders. It's you have to be the thing that you say you are. If you say you're the leader, stand up. Be the leader. You can't be a leader from the sideline. Or hiding amongst the people and saying, I'm a leader. Yes. Yes, I'm powerful. And we can't see you and nor any sign of it. The Most High says when you start putting your people together and the people get together, he is in the midst. Well, with what, two or three? Even more gathered, he's there. But you have to have that mind of unity. That's what these other nations, like when the Most High said... He put these people above you to mock you. Like, if we get a deeper understanding of mock, even in Hebrew, it's mimic you. Even this society mimics how we were supposed to be. We're supposed to be the most exclusive of all these nations. But we let everybody else in because we allow these other nations to force inclusivity on you. And I'll tell you how. There was a time when I used to, like, question... I have no respect for soilers. I think y'all know this by now. <laughs> but when swellers don't question anything, okay, so they're bound to be lost. They don't question much. They just go with the flow and highly superficial. When all these other nations you go and swirl out your good goods with, suddenly tell you, look, your child ain't good enough to be called us. They're black. Point blank period. I'm not saying the one drop rule, basically. I'm not saying, hey, BS is a great thing. But you claim that y'all are one. Right? That's that's what the marriage vows are. You become as one. But yet, your child is only called by, what, you? They don't, basically, they don't receive your bastards. They don't. They push that on you. So they push inclusivity on you and they still remain exclusive. What they say, they don't, even though we are supposed to be the purest, the holy people, the set apart people, we allow these others to force this upon us. Understood? They mimic us, but they still practice in exclusivity in terms of that's what we call they on code. Even when they're in your interracial relationship, in your beds, and sexing you out for all the <laughs> fetish that they have, they still stay on code. Becky's still keeping secrets for Billy and Bob that you don't, uh, you're not privy to, and vice versa with the men. I mean, it's, it, it's like the world is laughing at us. It, they are. Especially when you claim that you're something, but you're not acting like it. The Most High already said that, listen, you come together and I got your back. You come together on a, this is why we have to be defenders of the law. The Almighty, the Creator says he's got your back. But y'all don't want to stand up and be the people. He is the Most High. 
the most highest. He says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in, in this world. He is not equal to the God of this world. He is above and more powerful than the God of this world. I don't know if y'all are, are hearing me when I say this. Your Elohim is more powerful than the God of this world. Right? He didn't say great is he as the one in this world. No, he said greater. With you, you have greater and better. Like he says, he didn't give you more than you can bear. So all of y'all, when y'all say, oh, I'm going to jump ship and go to the other nations because they look greener on their pastures, it's because you are weak and you, by you can get purged. Because you can bear this. We already show you every single thing our people have gone through and they're still here. So yes, you can bear it. Not like the pastor who said, oh, the devil made him do it. No, the devil didn't make you do nothing you didn't want to do. He presented a tempting, uh, tasty, delectable situation and you went after what your heart desired. You don't have to go toward the temptation. You go because you want to. We all are undergoing the same oppression. So for all of y'all who think, oh, our brothers and sisters in Jamaica, or our brothers and sisters in Haiti, oh, they got their own stuff, we should stay apart. No, we are one nation, Judah, Israel. Their problems are problems and vice versa. We're all undergoing the same oppression. Some of y'all act like, you know, you're going through more than anybody else. We're all going through it because our nation was the one that scattered. So what got introduced when we got scattered and broken up because of disobedience of our own people? Because you still got some stiff-necked amongst us blaming Yahuwah. Crazy, ain't it? For your own actions. Behaving like heathens. The projection. Can't take any responsibility for our actions. You want to blame Yahuwah. He gave you a way out. And he gave you the strength to bear these things and a way out. And he told you all. But y'all don't want to turn to it. You keep con you continue in the wickedness because you're comfortable. The lamb is in the slaughterhouse. The lamb is in the nest of vipers. Getting comfortable. Bit up from left, right, and center. But he's so disillusioned he thinks he's okay. But you in danger. You are, and even if you truly read the scripture, let's go on a little bit more. You'll see. So he says, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and they were stings, there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt them five hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is in the Hebrew tongue Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. So some of y'all don't think it's a big deal about this, this language. But here it's telling you that already who and who. Because it's, it's, it's beyond just the name of the angel. But he's also showing you what's going on right here. It is a Hebrew and a Greek against each other. The Greco-Romans against the Hebrew. Like we said, our Messiah is the 777. He's the Hebrew. And their anti-Messiah is the Greco-Roman, the Greek version, the Antichrist. But y'all don't want to listen. Some of y'all keep running to the white savior and we trying to help you direct you to the right savior. Okay? The real power source. The Elohim who creates something out of nothing. Not their God who depends on our Elohim to create his race of people. Yeah. I remember the most high throughout my journey this month especially saying, listen, I am the most high, the Elohim of the originals. My people didn't change. I, he found good with his creation and that was it. He had no reason to create mutants or hybrids. He is a Yahuwah 
of the originals. And his set apart people, that is who he's with. Right? And he didn't, like, whatever he puts in my mouth, that's what I say. Some of y'all might want to change it because our people tend to be like that. You want to hear what you want to hear, but I can't. I can't do it for you. We have to let the people hear what they need to hear. Because, honestly, the Most High has been pleading to our people. And those of us who have this word or this this knowledge from our Elohim, that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to represent him to you so you understand he has been pleading. In Jeremiah 2, he asked, what iniquity did he ever do to you for you to chase these vanities? He did, What did he do? You know the Most High has no sin, so he didn't do anything. Let's go to Jeremiah 2. And uh, read this real quick. <clears throat> so here he says, Jeremiah 2 verse 5, Thus said Elohim, What iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain? He's simply asking, what did he do to you? What has he done to you? He hasn't done anything. If all the people who keep coming up against our Elohim, who keeps talking about how what he did and causing this and this to happen, no, it's because our people disobeyed him. The disrespect is real. Take accountability for your actions. And man up. Stop acting like the heathens. Stop throwing off responsibility of on other people. Stop. Let your word line up with the word of Elohim. Basically. Let your word be your bond. If you say you're a leader, be the leader. Okay? We're just... It's too much. Every single five seconds we on this and then you see... People find something new, shiny thing. All up in all these cel celebrities and their lies. Like, that's what they do. That's what they've been put out to do. Distract you. Distract, distract, distract. And you just go away with it. You got to stand for something or fall for everything. The Most High is not in your celebrity gossip. He's not in your slanders. He's not there. If that's what you love and you love the things of this world, then stay with it. But don't be over there celebrating what Elohim is doing and you're not doing your part. Because this is not going to go any faster than you allow it to be. Or allow it to go. He was pleading. Because you know, Elohim doesn't sin. Sin doesn't affect Elohim. He affects it. That's why he can't be around sinful people. If we talk about the high priest, uh, let's, let's go there for a second. The high priest, what was one of their main roles was to atone for Israel's sins, right? But in order to atone for Israel's sins, they themselves had to atone for their sins first. No blemish can be found on them. No sin. Because what would happen? What would happen if they had sinned and went into the Holy of Holies? They'd be destroyed. That's why they had to tie the ropes around them because it was never guaranteed. You had to 100% completely repent of your sins to atone for Israel. But you had to atone for yours first. So they pull him out if he's alive or if he's dead. You know, he might, he'll come out Willingly, if he's alive, sorry. But if he's dead, you got to drag him out because nobody else can really go in there. Sin does not affect Elohim like that. He, he'll, he'll just be destroyed in his presence. However, sin affects us. We don't affect it. So we can't relate or react in the same way in, in certain things like he does. For example, that's why we try to say you can't have hate in your heart. That's a sin. When people say sin no more is only talking about certain things like adultery, 
You got to really think about that because there's certain other sins that sometimes lead up to that adulterous moment. Like coveting somebody's husband or wife, stealing, fornicating. So in actuality, he's talking about sin, period. I'm not going to say this anymore because it, unless you truly understand deliverance ministry, you'll understand what sin really did to the people and to the body. It destroyed us. It let in demonic entities. Let me say it again. All y'all who getting spiritual attacks, you know what I'm talking about. The spiritual attacks this is why when they say get over slavery, no, it's not that easy. Because we are still going through the generational curses. We're still going through the spiritual beatings. The, the, the claws, the hooks, the bondage from slavery is still in us. So until we get it together and put aside all the petty stuff, because a lot of it is really petty. You can shake on a lot of these issues and move on. But someone's got to step up to the plate. And in all of this, especially through talking to the Most High, he always said to me, don't give up on the people, don't give up on the men. Okay, because he is going to breathe new breath into them. And it's going to be biblical. But they have to hear the word. Right? Faith comes by hearing the word, right? So, they have to hear and they have to believe Sorry, they have to believe because if you don't believe in who you are, that you are the valuable jewels of the most high, the, the most high of this planet, the most powerful Elohim there is. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know. It's like <laughs> the only way, man, I'm okay. I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. The jewels, the apple of his eye. Okay, the set apart people. The holy people. The, and to be the holy people, you got to be without sin. Balaam, Balak, all of them, they realized the only way that the sin, because that's why our people are suffering. The plagues got let in. This is what Revelation 9 is talking about. The plagues started flooding in because our people would not get in one accord. Because even if you read the book of Joel, Joel talks about it when our people get together. And this is what keeps my faith in my people. While some of y'all want to jump ship and be done, I got to keep this faith. I'm keeping this faith in my people. And like Brother Malcolm said, this is why when I say things like, I don't have a respect, I'm not a respecter of titles. Like he says he's a Muslim. But in a time when people weren't really representing us, he did in such a way that no one else was doing it. He did it like no one else. And Marcus Garvey, when he was talking about separation. Some of y'all get mad when I say this, but this right here is showing you the devil's children is already after you. And some of y'all are laying right in bed and dancing with the devil and wondering why your life is going to hell. You complain till you're blue in the face, but you, you're not doing nothing but causing more problems for yourself and us. And loving it. Because you must be loving it because you don't, you don't want to do better. You know? So, let's go on. So, here it talks about their king. Who, in the Hebrew tongue, is called... Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, had his name Apollyon. What does it mean? Looking this up, because we say, you know, many times they have different meanings, but some similarities. And I hope I get this right. The Hebrew tongue, I believe, Abaddon means the angel of death. And Apollyon means destroyer. I think I told y'all about the time when I was doing deliverance ministry for a little bit. And there was a Gentile woman who she was being attacked severely by because she was like in a satanic cult. And like she couldn't handle the demonic control over her. And she was looking for someone to deliver her. So she had come to the church to get delivered because she heard that there was deliverance going on there. And the demon that was up in her was called Destroyer. Yeah, how... <clears throat> interesting yeah destroy it that's what it was called and it had already told her that she's going to hell and there's nothing that she can do about it so the yeah these were the ones that were basically running people out of the the church but hey she might have been doing us a favor 
But that is what I'm talking about. Uh, Apollyon means destroyer. So the destroyer was set out for you. In Zechariah, however, the Most High talks about that he will destroy the destroyer. So if you really consider who you're dancing with and who y'all, some of y'all think y'all want to marry their women and you're going to be on equal with them. Some of y'all were laughing at my other videos when I talked about y'all literally are dancing with death. That's what they represent, death. The stone hearted. Because Esau done caused his children and the other nations to pass through the fire. To these other gods. Mal was it Moloch and Remphan and all these? I could go on some more down to even your hair. You know how our hair are like crimply? They don't want to laugh after our hair. Why is it they hate our hair so much? In order to get your hair like straight, bone straight and dead like that, what you got to do? Pass it through heat, right? Your your high heat, your flat irons, your flat combs, maybe even put a perm or creams in there. It's burning. That's what it does, right? To straighten it, it has to go through a burning process. Pretty much you're sacrificing your hair. But <laughs> we'll talk about that at another time. But the spirit puts these things, he just brings it to your memory. So, y'all, let's just give a thank you to the Ruach Hakadish, as always, for bringing the truth. But it's the same thing even with your skin color. When people bleach, what do they do? Burn out their pigment. But I know that's going to take a little bit more understanding for some of y'all, but some of y'all get it. Like, when I say things like, I'm not a respecter of titles, but of a person's heart. What do you do when nobody else is watching? When no one else has your back? For example, as we said, Ma Malcolm X, he was defending the most defenseless. And I know some of y'all want to be mad about it, but some of y'all really need to get out of your eff effeminate mindset. The black woman. The sacred womb. If that womb is gone, the tribe is done. It is. The sacred womb. This is what, read Jeremiah, what the Most High says about the delicate daughters of Zion. Some of y'all want to wanna, wanna ex exchange us for death. <laughs> yeah, that's what y'all doing. It's, it's like the world is laughing at us, but... It's really not funny. Some of y'all are down for this menstrual show. You don't want to get serious and realize, listen, right? We are in trouble. Take it seriously. We are in trouble. The most high ain't playing with us. Some of y'all are so down into just, just for real, La La Land. Not even realizing that you are vested in a mental institution called the devil's kingdom. The lamb is in the viper's nest. It's getting stung up. Disillusion. Just poor lamb don't know no better. And we're trying to help you. But you got to help me help you. Help me help us. And a lot of effeminate behavior is just like, Listen, the, the Most High didn't give you that. And effeminate people ain't going to enter into the kingdom. Man up. Be the leaders. We already said it. The Most High talks. Is, some of y'all didn't understand when I was talking about the daughters of Zion. And praying over the men and men being the power. And the heart. Well, I'm going to give you the whole verse out of the scripture and everything for that. But understand I mean what I say. And I say what I mean. So, got to get serious, Zion. You got to. Stop all this menstrual show like we have forever. It's going to come a time when it's we in the fifth seal. Especially right here. Right here. <laughs> Man, right here. Revelations 9. We talked about they come and they always have their king. That's what they want you to worship. That's what many of y'all are already worshiping. We tell you, get out of this Christian church. They're not here for you. You got pastors over here talking about the devil made them do it. You're supposed to be stronger than that. The devil didn't make you do anything you didn't want to do. I will say that again. 
and everybody running all left and right. No, a pastor, bishop should be blameless. Okay? That's what our people should be. The standard. Some of y'all, listen, I know we have some of our people who are sick, who have Alzheimer's, who have degenerative diseases, and they do need the help. But for all of y'all other able-bodied ones, what are you doing? The, this scripture, I want y'all to read Revelation 9 again and again and again. Realize, right, this is not something that is to come. This is something that is already happening. From the moment they let the colonizers out to go colonize the different areas, and set up your worldwide slave, um, your captivity in these different areas, it's been out. Okay. We're trying to get the people together to understand it's, it comes high time that y'all have some self-respect. Respect yourselves. There's no way I can look, I can say I love myself and look at my people and say that I truly love myself I can't look at them and say I hate them sorry and say I love myself I can't anybody who says that you're delusional you're lying to yourselves why would I not want to pro procreate and make what looks like me that's because you hate yourself you don't want to procreate and make what looks like you but the most I gave you basically when he let the heathens have you, basically set yourselves up. So you think you having something great. You're over there with the angel of death and his people. That's why I said to y'all before in my other videos, like, when I look in white people's eyes, man, I don't see nothing. It's cold. I said, you, you can tell by their eyes. The emptiness is dark. Death. And I've said it, and some of y'all want to laugh. But I don't say this of myself. I say it of... The Ruach HaKadosh, my friend, my family, our family. If you would just let the Most High speak and listen to him and really listen to him and just let go of all these other uh, worldly things. That's, that's what we mean by separate. But some of y'all over here letting people tell you, no, we shouldn't separate. We're good. When they tell you that, get weary of them. They don't mean you no well. But, yeah. So, he shows you here. This is uh, verse 12. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So, it's like it's building up. The birth pains. You got one woe, and then two, and hereafter. So, it's building up. So, this is showing you. This is past, present, future. But... What is a generational curse? It's something that keeps happening. Like I said, the most high shows even in your own life these things, but you have to be vigilant and watchful and realize what he's trying to show you. Like when I first uh did one of the videos, I said, in my life, I just keep seeing these same situations happening. It might be different players or different people in different locations, but it's the same thing. That's what's going on in our lives when we say nothing new under the sun. But it gets worse and worse and worse. Y'all got to do something about it. Because we do have what we call our black messiahs. And we have the, the, the king. The 144. The black messiahs walking the way of the messiah. The Hamashiach. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit more. But as we go on, we see... The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before Yahuwah. So where else do we see the four horns? Zechariah 1. What Elohim showed. He's about to destroy the horns of the Gentiles. Alright, so it is Zechariah 1 verses 18 to 21. And it reads... Then lifted I up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, 
Israel and Jerusalem. And the Lord, I know what the Lord means. I'm just sorry, y'all. Yahuwah shewed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come these to do? And he spake, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah, to scatter it. Judah, to scatter it. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that alone. But, uh, yeah. So, if you look at... When they're describing the locusts, they're talking about their helmets. If you have ever seen, because Yehukana or John is actually talking about the Roman. Well, he's trying to tell you who the people are, who are the ones that are taking our people into captivity. The colonizers, the Romans. And if you look at their helmets, and I'll show you a couple pictures as well. What do they look like? Locusts. Oh, I answered that too quickly. Let me try it again. <laughs> what do they look like? They look like locusts. And he says, as lo they don't have to exactly look like it, but he's trying to describe it from what he understands so you, he can give you a better understanding of it. So he's trying to tell you who the, who, who's the ones that are taking you up. They're Greek, the Greco Romans, the Greek. But he also describes to you their armor. Like we talk about, we have our armor, our, our helmet of salvation, or breastplate of righteousness. We talk about our own armor. So he's talking about their armor as well. What they, to, to give you an idea of who these people are. Or who are the locusts with the lion teeth. And the lion teeth is like a roar. It's like commanding. So they have taken over command, leadership. They um they are uh, subjugating or subjecting the people, and as you see, the scripture talks about the mouth a lot, and he talks about the scorpion sting. So we're going to talk about what the scorpion tail is as well that he mentions. And a lot of y'all know this, but I'll just help y'all, cause. For us to get on one mindset, we have to get to the point where we, we realize that, look, we're not trying to hurt each other. We have to try to help each other because, Israel, we're all we got. We're all we got. Don't entertain these selfish thoughts about we don't care about what's going on in all these other... We are one nation, scattered, unfortunately. So, what's going on in with our other people, we're all undergoing it. <laughs> okay? We're all undergoing the curses. So for those people who like to, you know, stay on an island and scruff off themselves and say, you know, leave these other immigrants out of the picture, woe on to you. Stay on the island by yourself. But I love my brothers and sisters, and we all, this, this is the exclusivity of Israel. <laughs> okay? We include ours. Anyway, um, sorry, that might have been... I think I overlooked one of the passages, but let's see. It... Okay, so he four, he the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. So this is going on into talking about you know that final hour, preparing them for the time when the one third would be because think of it the reason he says one third is because the third part the the most high people will have to you lose their lives again i know i don't like to say it either i know some of y'all don't like to think of it but it will be a blessing it will be biblical especially when our people stand up once again and the ascension of the black messiahs that's what it just keeps coming into my mind. That's what the spirit says. The black Hamashiachs. Because they walk in the way of the Messiah. Of course, then there's the Elo, the Yahushua Hamashiach. But then you also have those amongst us. Or the saints. So, let's see. So, they talk about the scorpion sting. Now, I want y'all to, if you could, pull up um, a picture of a scorpion uh, tail. 
and then pull up a picture of the slave master's whip and look at those two. Think of what were they using back in those days to keep the men and women, break them, break their will, keep them subjugated. Because don't for a second think our people didn't fight back. There were many, many, many rebellions. Many. Okay. But also, it's a part of the curse, Deuteronomy 28. Right? The Most High said what? He took the might out of your hand. That's what he said. That's a part of it. So no matter how much our people tried to rise up, we couldn't. Because we keep forgetting, without Elohim, we're going to lose. All y'all have to do is subject your will back to our Elohim. And the Most High, the Most Highest of Elohim, will have your back. He already declared the victory. It's just when, Israel, when, Judah, when will you say enough is enough? Lord, child, I've already been there. <laughs> enough is enough. I'm telling you. So if you pull up, I'm going to put a, a couple pictures and look at a scorpion's tail. And look at a braid. And look at the whips. The whips that they used to use to, uh, to whip the ancestors, they braided it. They, they also have this picture here where they have this Gentile lady and she has her braids and it looks just like a scorpion tail. But, and then they would say like the heads, what did he say? He said, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. They give orders. And not only that, they slander us. Slander the people. That's a huge thing. Before we were even born already slandered us that's why wherever we go in the world everybody's always looking at us like mm, yeah they probably ain't got nothing anyway and I, I, i'll give you an example let's look at oprah you know oprah right she was a only time i ever thought a black woman could be a billionaire right she went to what oprah the talk show host that's what she is and now she has her own channel so she went to some uh, european country and I think she walked into the store and she was trying to look at one of their products or a bag or something. And what did the guy do? He basically snubbed her like she couldn't afford it. Excuse me. This is Oprah. Oprah helped put Obama <laughs> in power with uh, the politics and all that stuff. You mean to tell me this man ain't never heard of her? Because when he looked at her, he looked at her color first. Don't get it twisted. Some people may be like, oh, she was trying to butter it up and be like, oh, I didn't have on my whatever on my lashes or something. I don't know. Maybe she was trying to be funny. But even then, no matter how much money you have and you claim to be a black person, you want to be selfish and singular about it, it doesn't help you. Another example happened with Magic Johnson and Samuel L. Jackson, I believe. They Same thing happened to them pretty much maybe around the same time or a little later, where they also got treated like boys in a European country. I don't know why y'all love Europe so much, but... <laughs> yeah, they got the same thing happened to them. I think Magic is almost a billionaire, too, maybe worth more than $500 million. So, uh So is Samuel L. Jackson probably 200 I don't know. But they got a lot. You know... Samuel L. Jackson from Django. That's what we remember his character. The high mighty King Coon. Or Uncle Ruckus. That one. So they got treated like boys. They sunned them. The thing is this. Right? You can make as much individual wealth as you want. But real power or real... Or sorry. I mean riches. Because there's a difference between riches and wealth. Wealth comes with power. True power is one where they recognize, look, wherever you go, listen, you might be a white trailer trash, they still look at you in certain areas like, oh, you still higher than the richest black person. You got more power and they still treat you better. That's the power. And it comes from them having one mind and one unity. Or unity amongst them. Our people, we don't have that. We scattered and we, we have these people amongst us who are like, 
man, I don't care what's going on with these other uh, black people. Leave them alone. We got our own problems. You're the problem. Because you're not thinking powerfully enough. Real power comes with unity. And it might seem scary to you because you haven't quite tasted it as yet. That's why these Gentiles, they don't want to let go of it. They will fight for theirs. So, let's go back to, um, okay. So, if you look at that, the scorpion tail, and you look at how they did some of these whips, you notice how it's braided and it will be lumped together. And they even talk about, the scripture says, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. So, they would not the end of the whips like they would look like little balls so you'll see some of uh the people with these nasty gashes all over their backs and their bodies those and they, they stink i've got a few whippings in my life when i was a kid it was not a nice thing can you imagine getting these and they didn't even leave a mark those left a mark they cut them to the white meat i've never felt a scorpion sting but it's pretty painful i've heard so Revelation 9, Deuteronomy 28. And it talks about the fifth seal as well because the angel of death is their king. So he's the one who's leading them. Who? The colonizers. The, the colonizers now, they took on a whole different form, but they're still the same. The Romans, the Greek. Well, for the most part, the Greek. Because he's tell, he's, they're showing you right here who they're talking about. The men that they got a, they put a hurting on them for, what, five months? That's a biblical time, according to the Most High, to hurt them. Now you see, we've been talking about Fukushima, so you see they hurting everything. They hurting the grass, they hurting the trees, they in trouble. So I try to tell, like there's a pro-black person here, I listen to her every now and then. And she said, she, you know, she talked pro-black. Real pro-black, real code. Because we already have a code. It's called the commandments. The law, basically. Our law. The holy law. That they basically deviated their law from to some degree, but to protect them. Like we said, they mimic us. But true code is when you get into conversations with them and they try to get this high, mighty, um high moral code going on which so hypocritical like oh how do y'all feel with the men leaving or all of these things going on in your community i'll tell you how i feel it's called mind your own business our ship is not sinking any faster than yours okay because before they come to us and it's, it's really sad when people actually entertain this stuff Think about every single thing they've been doing. They literally slaughtering the entire planet. And the Most High is like, at this point, enough is enough. He's like, let the real people stand up. But when are y'all going to do it? It's not enough to just talk about being leaders. You actually have to be it. Right? So people sit down and they'll just brush it off. Like, you have the Gentiles coming because they see our people and think that we're so destroyed when we, meh, their Messiah is not coming until another 30 years. Because they don't understand we walk by faith, not by sight. We look at these dry bones and we can see them coming to life. Because the Most High is the one that promised he will use his spirit to breathe life back into his people. Alright? Not them. They're not our God. So it has to come to a time when if you want to be truly pro-black and exercise that and have be taken seriously, you've got to be down with having a code. And be powerful about it and say, mind your own business. I don't care what Tyrone and Lakeisha did. That's none of your business. That's our business. And we ain't going to talk about this today or any other day. Or while we at it, do we need to talk to you about your white and white crime, your white and black crime, your white and brown crime, white and yellow crime, white and humanity crime, white on the world crime, white on the environment crime? Need we say more? You got a lot going on. Y'all in deeper doo-doo. Maybe you should fix your community before you come and mess with us. Because every single time they say things like, uh, we got 30 more years. It's because they're trying to make it seem like we are so broken. They had already planted the seeds and they seen the evil sprout. 
But they've got to see how these dry bones push against it. Because he said he did not give you more than you can bear. We told you. Look at our ancestors. Look at Yakub. Once again, take that in. When we said, you ever wonder why it's called Jacob's trouble? I think I got cut out when I said that. And not Israel's trouble. Because at this point, Jake going to have to work his way back up to being the holy people. The holy set apart people. The people who he calls Israel was called a virgin. Some of y'all, when you heard virgins, were thinking, man, I ain't been a virgin in a long time. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the commandment keepers. The very reason why we said sin was not supposed to be amongst our people. No guile found in their mouth because they have been found blameless. Like the high priest when they atoned for Israel. That's what they were supposed to be, blameless. Like the Messiah, blameless, without blemish, without sin. That is what the virgin is, pure to our Elohim, the first fruits of our Elohim. So with that, brothers and sisters, oh, let me just make sure I covered everything. The bases, so we talked about the helmets looking like locusts. And they're trying to describe that the horse looking like the lion, the lion with the commanding voice taking command and taking over, which is like we talked about the beast kingdom, the Gentile kingdom. So, but it's showing you that it comes a time when this is going to have to come to an end. And he talks about the one third, the third part of men killed by the fire and the smoke and by the brimstone. Y'all know brimstone is like, it comes from, uh, uh, lightning, but it's also contains sulfur. Y'all know, like the Gentiles are are what they would call karma. Like we said, rod of correction, and we also know them differently because even in their makeup, they're made up of sulfur. Look up brimstone. Yeah, they're called the destroyer for a reason, and many of our people are being destroyed daily because they won't wake up. And the destroyers, as we said, they're doing a very good job at it. And the most I puts in here what it is that y'all have to repent from. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should now worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood. Some of y'all still think, oh, we can, we can just put the cross up, child. Mm-mm. <laughs> Ooh, stiff neck, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. He keeps telling you he's an Elohim of the living. Y'all still worshiping stones. What, y'all got the wailing wall in God he knows where? Or you have worse. This is why I don't, I don't get with the Allah thing at all. Y'all got that big old rock or that big old stone. Y'all know what the Muslims did to uh, Malcolm. Some of y'all need to choose wisely. <clears throat> Not calling no names. <laughs> but yeah. Some of y'all see uh they got their statues with crying blood. That ain't no, that ain't the most high. He's not there. That's demons. That's a demonic thing right there. And people want to get all excited. Oh my goodness, Mary's crying blood. <laughs> Must be the God. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's not our Elohim. So repent. Therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, Israel. And uh, just the last part before we go. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Yep, all of that sinfulness. So repent, repent, repent. Humble yourself. And return to our Elohim. And um, let me just say, before I, I go, I wanted to touch on one more thing real quick. I know this is longer than I thought I was going to do today. I tell y'all I wasn't going to do something long today, but <laughs> I had another message and this one intercepted. So I go as how my Elohim leads me. For the people that I love, 
I know some of y'all don't believe, but I really do love you. I really, really, really do. So I said before, I can't look at my people and say I love myself and be like, oh, I hate them. No. Like, no. Anybody else says different, they're a liar. Alrighty. Trying to get into... Okay. Bear with me one second. Okay, here we go. James 4, is it James? Okay, James 4, verses 7 to 12. For all of y'all who's still questioning doing a 40-day fast, listen. Right, I'm praying for y'all. Right, for the most high to cover you with his spirit and with his power. Right, the main thing about it is to not give up. Right, there was a Gentile who gave me a verse where she talked about, um, you know, we were to preach the gospel to every creature. But the thing is this. Most I didn't say every creature would respond, right? He did say, however, that his sheep will hear his voice and another they will not follow. So it is up to those who believe, those who hear, and those who know, like, what time it is. Time is up. That's what time it is. So let's read this real quick. Uh, Submit yourselves, therefore, to Yahuwah. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to your Elohim, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Elohim and he shall lift you up. Most High promises to be with you when you turn back and uphold the laws, the commandments, the statutes. His commandments is what seals his people and gets them back to the virgin. The virgin state. That's what he's talking about. Purify yourselves. Like, like a virgin. That's what he called. That's why he called Israel a woman. Like the daughter of Zion. And also for them to rise up or raise up or ascend, as I say most times. And protect each other. But most of all, protect the sacred womb. Because the womb goes out. Because some of these women be talking about they, they finna jump ship. You know, things like this can be squashed. All we got to do is be gentle with each other. Be good to each other. Understanding. Some, though, and also be, for example, when you see that man in a dress. Y'all know, y'all know. That, <laughs> no, honey. Nope. That's a no. Do better. Do better. Right? The scripture talks about you don't be wearing women's clothing either. Anyway. Sorry it was that long. But you know, I haven't talked to y'all in a while. But I will try to post a little bit more. Other than that, shalom and be blessed.